Hello guys, thanks for joining me in my next video. So I just wanted to say a shout out to my new subscribers. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Um, <clears throat> if you have not been here before and you're just watching and not subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe if you want to hear more from me. I basically cover politics and life from a Christian, like a female Christian perspective, if you want, sort of a traditional female. So, um, Today we're going to talk about what you can do to make a difference. So this is an article about an event that happened in someone's life. And I think it's important to talk about this because so many times it's easier just to not say anything. And I find myself that way. It's just easier not to do anything, et cetera, like that. But you can, I want to show you how it makes a difference. Okay. So in this article, a young man uh, rides the bus to the West coast and it's May of 1964. And I'm just going to read until a certain point. So it says pointing at a bus with a long line of people near it. The driver told me, son, you better make a beeline for that bus right over there. Don't waste a second. Or you'll be here for most of the day. I thanked him and grabbed my suitcase. I was the only passenger on the midnight run from Charleston to Atlanta, but the bus from Atlanta to New Orleans was full as a sardine can. By the time I climbed aboard, only two seats were available. One in the middle of the bus near a white woman, the other in the black, uh, sorry, the other in the back among black men. All eyes were on me as I walked to the back of the bus and sat down. Obviously, I didn't understand the depth of the ethnic problems. When the black man with a deep southern drawl told me I couldn't sit there because that was the colored section, I informed him, probably louder than I should have, this is America and I have the freedom to sit anywhere I choose. So the, the irony of that statement right now, <laughs> but it's a true statement. If you're free, then you can sit where you choose. With mouths agape and eyes wide open, every head in the front half of the bus spun around toward the front. It was deathly silent for a few seconds as everyone contemplated the words that spewed forth from my mouth <laughs> of a white 17-year-old. In his deep southern drawl, the middle-aged man on my left said, You could get off a hood if you sit here. You better move on front where you belong. He was kind and was truly worried about my personal safety. I'll take my chances. I want to sit here with you. So a lot of us in this situation wouldn't do it because we think, well, if a black person comes on, then they're, they're not going to be able to sit amongst the white people and all this stuff. We would just, we would just rationalize it in our head in the, if we were in the 1960s, okay? But I want you to look at one thing. <clears throat> Whenever he said, I am... American or this is America and I have the freedom to sit where I choose what happened there the reaction to his statement it made people think and you know it you can tell it did because if they just bought into the nonsense of you know what black and white people have to stay separate because they're different races and all this nonsense that doesn't exist they would have removed him from the bus or they would have put him in the other seat next to that woman or they would have done whatever right but they didn't, they turned around and they were just a bit shocked. Like, oh, that just making that statement has, has begun to make people think, okay? Sometimes the changes that you make in life, you never get to see because people don't always realize that they're starting to change uh, because it takes time for people to change, etc. <clears throat> So just saying that simple statement loud enough for everybody to hear started a thing in people's heads. Okay. Again, if they didn't, they would have removed him. And the way that you can know this, you, the way that you can see that I'm going down the right path here is that you just think about the mask thing that happened recently. People totally bond into, you have to have this to keep people safe. And because they bought into it, they started to push people out of grocery stores, they harass them, things like that. That didn't happen to this guy. So you know that these people are not fully bought into this I, these ideals here. Okay, so let's keep going. It was obvious to everyone else in the bus that I didn't understand the implications of what the man meant. 
on our trip that took us halfway across country, that wise gentleman taught me a na- taught me a naive California teenager a college course on the plight of Black Americans, a lesson I have never forgotten. Reading about it and seeing it on television is one thing, but hearing it firsthand from a man who confronted it every day of his life is another. Ethnic prejudice is a curse, a manifestation of ignorance and unfounded pride. So I have, so I agree with that, but I also have like, I don't think, I think some people just weren't thinking. They just have heard only one thing their whole life and were like, oh, okay, so I guess that's just how it is. Somebody, I watched a movie one time and they asked this guy, why is he in the KKK? He's like, well, because my daddy was, my grandpappy was, my great grandpappy. For some people, it's just the way things are, that, that that's how they were raised. So here, so they have to hear something different before they begin to think differently. Okay, um, so let's just keep going. Let's see. The man and I shared about our lives. He was a 48-year-old, I was 17, and both of our lives were forever changed. He never previously had a discussion with anyone who was not black. Oh, insults, anger, hatred, but never open discussion. And he couldn't understand why a white kid would respect him and treat him as an equal. Okay, so that's important too, you know? This whole thing so far is just about words, just about conversation and how we treat each other on just sort of the daily basis, right? That can change the world. It does change the world. It, we, we, we have seen this, but we have forgotten it, I think. But we see this changing the world just consistently all the time. Let's see. In New Orleans, the bus emptied and would be cleaned prior to its return trip. I thank the man for his kindness and for teaching me about his life. He didn't want to be seen shaking hands with me because where would get out or get around that he had defected. Now, something I have learned is that sort of that attitude is still around some where, you know, for some reason there is a thought process of nowadays anyway for some reason the white man keeping down the black man whatever um that's not true we have so many black millionaires that it's not even funny uh, i watch a guy i used to work with he's doing better than i am so I mean, it's not because of like he went into the military and then he used the money when he got out to leverage against purchasing real estate he did what a lot of people do to get rich and that's buy real estate. I mean, these are just, he made good decisions, so he did well. And that's America, right? We disembarked and went separate ways. He went to visit relatives and I boarded the next Greyhound. I enjoyed the remainder of the trip through South Te- Texas, Southern New Mexico, etc. Oh, here it is. This, uh, sorry, I skipped this. I thank the man for his kindness and for teaching me about his life. He didn't want to be seen. Okay. But he assured me that he greatly enjoyed my friendship and would no longer believe everything he was told about white people. Okay, so here's the thing. On either side of whatever position you stand on, there's someone telling you something about the thing. You have to do what these two people did and actually go find out for yourself. Go talk to people, go figure it out. What you will find at least, oh geez, at least 95% of the time is that both sides have a skewed view of what reality is. Okay, so this gentleman, both of these people were raised uh, separately. They came together as like, oh, you you respect me? Okay, when well, we can have a, we, we can have a conversation. I won't believe everything bad that somebody says about whatever color you are, just because I had a bad experience. <clears throat> I've had bad experiences with all kinds of people, black, white, men, women. I don't take those bad experiences and go, well, because you are a man, because you are a woman, because you are black, because you are blah, 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 etc. Um, I'm not going to deal with you anymore. That's not what you do. Because guess what? <laughs> that person probably won't do that to you. So you lose out if you live this way. So guys, what you can do is just simply live freely. And, you know, he took a risk saying that because of where he was. He didn't realize he did, but he took a risk saying that. He took a risk sitting there talking to the guy. The guy took a risk sitting there talking to him. Um, 
it's uncomfortable to do these things, uh, but that is how you change the world. That's how you change things in your area. That's how you do the things you need to do to make a difference. So I just hope I encourage you guys, just say the truth. Just say it. If people don't like it, that's fine. They don't have to, but at least they've heard it. The Bible says all the time to say what God has done for you, to encourage, to be an encouragement to other people, to uh, whenever you pray, to say, sometimes to pray out loud. And the reason why you do all these things is one, is it encourages you, two, it encourages others, and three, it gets the truth out there. If you're always saying what God's done, if you're talking to people and saying, oh, I'm God, this for me, whatever, people start to realize, oh, there's something to this. You know, I did not come to Jesus Christ because I thought it was a good way to go. Initially, I thought paganism was the way to go initially. I came to Jesus Christ because one of the three reasons, because there are three elements to it, was um, people telling me, hey, I'll pray for you, or hey, this happened, you know, I prayed for that, or etc. like that. So it's not going to be um, just because you know, God is out there. He is out there. He is looking for us, but it's going to be because you see proof of it. And the way that you, one way that you can see proof of it is hearing people talk about it. Well, this happened for me and this, etc. I have, you know, this, that, and the other because of it. So <clears throat> I just, I just want to encourage you guys, wherever you are, speak the truth, wherever you are, Treat people with respect and kindness, okay? The Bible has a thing. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. Not how somebody treated you before, but how you would want to be treated, okay? So anyway, that's all I have for today. I want to remind you, pray and read your Bibles, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.